This video is brought to you by BenQ Design and Photography Monitors, the perfect choice for visual effects artists, photographers, and any designers in the creative industry. Visit BenQ.eu to discover the PD and SW monitor lines. This video was also created with the support of Foundry, creators of Nuke, the industry standard for digital compositing and visual effects software used in film, commercials, short films, gaming, and much more. Visit Foundry.com to know more. Always remember you can watch the rest of the Nuke for Beginners series on this playlist. And if you like my videos and podcasts, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free and it would really help us reach 100,000 subscribers and get certified on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support. And now, on to the video. As I said, this is a production shot that we're going to be doing today. This is a shot from Yukol. It's a this is a cinematic that I directed. Uh, on the last stream, I actually showed everyone the actual cinematic. Uh, I'm not going to do that, that again. But uh, this is the full script. We're not, of course, going to do this. This took several days to do. We're not going to do it just in a couple of hours here. But the final shot kind of looks like that. And the reason I brought this shot is because I want to... There's a couple of things I want to show um, in regards to the stuff that we've been learning so far in Nuke for Dummies. You know, specifically how to uh, apply all these layers. Because in this specific shot, we have three main layers. We have a background... We have a foreground, which is the main character, and then we have particles, fire, smoke, and then we have depth of field, motion blur. I just want to go through and, and guide you through this um, of how this kind of thing works. Okay, so let's let's jump into the shot itself. This is the script that I'm going to be doing today. So right here, I saved the time already bringing everything in. So I just want to do a little quick overview of what we have here. So, obviously, that's the final comp of what I've delivered, um, but that's not what we're going to be doing. I have a lot of things here. So, basically, I have what we would call a particle system that was made in Udini by our talented artists um, at, uh, at my company. So, this was done at my company, um, you know, which is called VFX Bureau. Uh, I don't have a website, no, no point of view searching for it. We've also done, um, it was actually done by Milk Can as well, but it's a company from Germany. They are really talented and they, they did these particle systems. So we have some uh, particles uh, which were filmed. This is not a deep compositing script, by the way. It's also not ACES as well. Since uh, this was rendered in 2018, um, I will be doing uh, an ACES-based tutorial soon. Um, uh, unfortunately, this one is is not ISIS because it was rendered in normal linear, I guess leg legacy linear, I guess you would say. So we have some particles here. Uh, we have some fire passes as well. We have more fire passes. I just wanted to show you this because I want to kind of show you how do you put all of this together. As you probably already noticed, we have, uh, I'm actually going to put uh, the buffer to 8 so that you can see the video output instead um, of this. Because this is my black magic video out that you're now seeing in full screen. So the reason I wanted to discuss this is because obviously the work starts not in comp, but it works starts in CG. So this entire thing worked because there was occlusion already made. So as you can see, the particles have geometry occlusion. This could have been solved with deep compositing, but we are not using deep compositing on this specific thing. So that means the CG artist in this case, one Brockhaus, which did this uh, render, he had to use the geometry of the scene to occlude the particles that are being uh, either um, occluded by the, the character or also bounced by the character. And that's how you have this particle system and you have this fire um, here and then we have this fire here as well. And I think last but not least, we have some sparks, I believe. Yeah, these are really... I'm just going to gamma this up so you can see it a bit better. These are just some 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 random sparks going around. Uh, sometimes we render a lot of things, but then sometimes we don't see them. Um, but, you know, it's it's just it's better to have more than to not have, uh, you know. Uh, then um, other things that we have here is we obviously... This comes from 2018, so we didn't have cryptomats. Uh, apologies for that, but it's the same as this that you're seeing in screen. This is like what a cryptomat used to be, uh, which is basically a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel. It's This is what we call an object ID. We have object IDs for every part of the scene. Uh, obviously, these days, we don't need this. We can just use a cryptomat. It's so much easier to use a cryptomat, but 
object ID still work. You know, it's not a problem. <clears throat> so they still they still work just fine. Um, then of course we have. Uh, if this was deep compositing, we could have rendered everything together, but because it's not deep compositing and because we wanted to control the depth of field and we wanted to control the motion blur and the edges, we rendered it separately. So we have just the background. By the way, this is baked motion blur. Uh, this is rendered in Redshift. So this is the baked motion blurred version of the background. We have the destruction made by, by Giant Milk Can in Germany. We also have the render done by One Brockhaus here as well. Um, and as you can see here, this is just the beauty. And then, of course, we have all the passes. We have like the diffuse and we have the diffuse raw and all the different passes that we are going to discuss in a minute. Uh, we have them all here. I am a big advocate of having all the passes. Uh, I know some compositors don't use all the passes. That's fine. Everyone can do whatever they want. It's not a problem. I like to have a lot of control, so obviously, like I usually say, I like to have all the passes. I prefer to have everything, and then if I don't use it, I don't use it. But if I don't have it, then what do I do? You know, if I don't have it, then I'm screwed, because I may, might be missing something. Uh, obviously, I know that with deep compositing, is a bit simpler, because you can probably render everything together. And we're going to have tutorials like that in the future. Um, and also, of course, not. I want to really emphasize to everyone here... Sometimes it's not possible for you to comp all these passes. This is more typical for a film pipeline where you have more time. Um, normally, if you don't have a lot of time, if it's like more strict project, like imagine if it's a commercial or if you have very little time to deliver, imagine you only have a week to deliver, you might want to consider just using the beauty and cryptomats or maybe use the beauty and remove a pass and then put it back again. So... Consider that for different deliveries, you need to approach with different strategies. On this occasion, if this was a film and I have I had a lot of time, in this case, on this project, we had three months to do the project. So yes, I went all in. I had every pass I needed. I didn't use all of them. No, did not. I'm going to be telling the truth. But it was better to have them not, did not have them, okay? Just like I said as well, we have the character as well, uh, separated. This is uh, rendered from Redshift as well. Um, and it has an alpha channel. And then, of course, we have all the different AOVs and passes from Redshift. Uh, we have every single thing we need here, really. Um, and then we have a couple of more things. This is a special pass that I've asked um, you know, my CG artist to do. This is what we called a fake deep pa depth, uh, depth pass. Uh, it's very cool because it's a depth pass with antilization. So this is really powerful for fog. It's not really going to help on this shot. But remember we did that last week. Sorry, last month. Last month I showed you how to use this pass. We're not going to use it on this shot because this shot is inside a barn. So it's not really necessary for us to do that. We also have a fake cam and occlusion pass as well for both the character and the background. I know this is a very old school pass, but I, I like this. I like to sometimes use it a little bit on, on the comp. We then, of course, have the depth pass. We have also some normals and some position. Not that we are probably going to use it uh, because we have the geometry, but in case we need to, it's here. And then, of course, goes without saying that we have the rig itself. So this is... Um, the geometry, I'm going to switch on this lamp here. Uh, we have the geometry uh, of, of the cache. So this is cached from Maya. The entire geometry is here. It's a bit heavy, but it doesn't matter. It's only for us to see what we're doing and to know where the characters are. I love the, the detail. This is lovely. Look at the animation. Because we're not viewing the legs... <laughs> our animator just went ban bananas with the legs. It doesn't really matter because we are not framed to see the legs. So this is really, really funny. <laughs> this is uh, animated by Wells, um, you know, Wells Bussett, which is one of my favorite animators. He's a big, 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 big friend of mine as well. Thank you so much, Wells, for that. Uh, we also have the camera, of course. Uh, also, of course, we have the geometry. Not that it's going to help, because uh, this is the proxy geometry. They are inside this barn, so it's not going to help the geometry, because they're inside the barn. <laughs> so it's not like going to help us on any way. But it's good for us to know where to position things, especially if we want to position the sky and... Um, and so if you look at the framing here, you see, I wanted the character to like be always on frame. 
so that it was the camera traveling with the character. Obviously, the problem here is that this, you know, the legs are not visible, so you don't even see them. So it doesn't matter, really, uh, because you don't really see the legs on this perspective. But if we would have the legs normal, and um, I am assuming, this is, of course, my assumption, is that if we had the legs normal, I think he would be bouncing up and down. So I think that's why Wells did this. Um, but it is funny. Now we've did an overview of everything we have here. Remember that the original script uh, looks like this. Uh, I think I briefly talked about it, but um, this was very. This is organized by me. I'm a very organized person, so you know we have a section here where we put all the shaders and all the things inside the stream, and then I reconstruct the shader. Uh, then we have, of course, a geometry part with the matte painting as well. I'm going to be picking up pieces from here. First thing I do when I comp anything is to just do an A over B. Uh, the A over B will just be a way of me checking if everything is working as it should. So this A over B will just be with the main passes that we have. So this means that we are going to be using mostly the beauty passes and not the AOV passes. And these would be these passes here so we're going to start by doing our um you know a over b so we have our background and our foreground so that's the two first things i'm going to do just going to do like a b a and just like check and this is a a very very important phase i'm going to just lower the gamma um because it's it was very dark there so this is just a, a a really quick way of me checking okay is everything rendered do we have all the frames is everything going well is everything working? I'm just going to like increase the the gamma here a little bit. I'm running a Rex 09 monitor. Maybe maybe I'm going to run a, an sRGB so you can see it a bit better. I think it might help. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, we're, we're, viewing it, we're viewing this on, on YouTube, of course. And on YouTube, it's always a bit tricky with the Rex 09. Sometimes it doesn't work well. So I think now you can see it a bit better. Uh, so yeah, so this is the first phase, A over B, well, how does it work, how does it look? Obviously, if we were doing a lot of shots all together, like I've done on this project, um, I a lot of times copy-paste setups from other shots, you know, a lot of times we do that. So keep that in mind that that would have already happened, we already would have had a master shot. So let's consider that maybe this is the master shot of the close-ups. And then we have wide shots and we have other type shots as well happening. And then let's just also double check if everything is working in terms of the particles. Oh, of course, the particles are going to be a bit more tricky because they're not uh, done to be just A over B. You know, So, for example, if I put like a, a plus operation here and um, if I do this, you know, if I merge this, I have the particles here. Obviously, it's going to be a bit overexposed because it's not really going to be... Uh, specifically like this that we're going to comp this we also have the fire from the we also have the fire these are two versions we also have the sparks and we also have the fire i'm just going to put them all all in a one go just to see if they are all there and we have all the frames as we should uh, obviously i i know that they are there because i finished this shot but i just wanted to kind of like show you my process i i start by just merging everything and just having a look, you know, just like making sure, okay, is everything here? Is everything working? And how does it look when I just merge everything? So this is how it looks when I merge everything. That's the version that we didn't deliver, of course. Like, now, at the time, there was a moment in this project where we were going to do fire. Um, what happened was that the client, discussing with the client, there was a moment where we were going to have fire on this character. The character would be on fire. Now, we then changed that from fire into, like, this green magic thing. So, um, you know, I think I think that's, that's what happened here. Obviously, this is just the raw passes. Uh, in the final project, we then convert that fire that you see into kind of like a a more greener thing. This was all linear, so we have an enormous amount of, of a dynamic range. Keep in mind, people, that when I comp this normally, I comp in Rex 09, but because I have my monitor in Rex 09, but for YouTube, I'm putting sRGB. Just because it's getting really dark, I can see here on my preview, so I've changed it to sRGB. Don't ask why is it wrong or why is it in sRGB. It really depends on the deliveries you're doing. 
Okay, so now that I know that this is all working, I'm going to start comping this thing. Because we then have, like, now that I look at this, I'm going to do, like, a list of things that I'm going to accomplish. Obviously, I could have a list from a client. Or I could have, of course, um, uh, notes from the supervisor or from any other people. And I want to consider that I, obviously, I want to consider having depth of field. That's the first thing. Motion blur I don't need because everything is motion blur already. So I want to consider having depth of field. And so I want to work on that. I'm also going to consider having some nice interaction fire glow going on. Uh, obviously, the final version that we delivered, um, it's a bit stylized. It's, it's very stylized, in fact. Uh, but that was the point. It was the point to be stylized. But we did a lot of things like this. You know, we had like bouquets. Uh, we had a lot of grain. We had a very dark bark background so that we could have the exposure on the main character, which was much brighter than everything else. And so the background kind of took a step down as well so that we would expose to this character so that the character would be exposed to the fire. So the fire would be the brightest thing on screen. And then everything else would be exposed to that. And that's why it's it kind of becomes so dark. Also, we have like an extra pass here, which I haven't talked about. This was a pass done inside of Nuke. This is like a really fake scratch pass. Uh, I know it looks like like, like crap. But the, the whole point with this is that we are going to use this to just add some little subtle scratches into the shot. Um, in fact, I, I can show you what I mean. Like if I look, if you look in here and you look, um, you know, I'm going to just open up the original to show you this better. Here we go. Sorry. So, um, okay. I'm going to just like disable this because we've uh, in integrated that scratches into here and to here. So I'm going to just like show you the A over B. The, this is the AOV's setups already done. As you can see, it's pretty clean, uh, as you can see here. And when I activate this scratch pass, you can kind of see that we now have a few scratches. Uh, now, obviously, I know the scratches are not physically accurate. <laughs> and it's not really... This is something could have been done in, in 3D. It could. But uh, what happened at the time was because this came very late into the game. It was already too late to go back to 3D. So we ended up doing the scratches using a UV pass inside of Nuke uh, just to give it a bit of more damage to the main character. Uh, we could have done it in 3D, but then that meant we had to re-render everything. It was already too late to re-render. We were just delivering. So that's why we did, why we did what we did. So, um, but yeah.